If you had the opportunity to share the gospel with one of the richest men in the world, would you do it? Or would you cower in the face of pressure? Would you chicken out at the last second? How would you go about it? Well, this week we had the opportunity to see that very situation play itself out in full HD on the Babylon Bee YouTube channel. The Babylon Bee is a Christian satire organization who have made a name for themselves in many evangelical circles, even moving beyond that into having Elon Musk become one of their biggest fanboys. I've been familiar with the Babylon Bee for a number of years. I can think back to when I was like 16 years old being homeschooled and a number of my friends would post uh, Babylon Bee articles on the daily on Facebook. Although I have to be honest and say I haven't actually read many of their articles, their headlines do usually strike a chord with me. Apparently I wasn't the only one to feel that way and Elon Musk began to post and repost all sorts of articles on his Twitter, which you can imagine led to a controversy in and of itself. Okay, now with all that set up in place, we move to the podcast in question question the interview with Elon Musk. This is huge, right? And so according to one of the guys, a part of the interview from the Babylon Bee or formerly from the at Babylon Bee, he had said that there wasn't a lot of lead up to this interview. It was very impromptu. They get, didn't get a lot of notice. And so they didn't have a lot of time to prepare. Now, with all that being said, my primary interest is on the last seven minutes of this podcast. Though I listened to the whole podcast, the first hour or so isn't particularly interesting for the purposes of this channel. And so let's Let's take a look at a couple of the segments from the last seven minutes. We're here, we're, you know, the Babylon Bee is a Christian organization, you know, and uh, we're a ministry. Well, well, how come we're doing the show on a Sunday? Why aren't you heathens in church? <laughs> exactly. So we have to make it church right now. This is right supposed now. to be a day of rest. We did you, Zoom church. To do, justify. Do you have any idea, like God said, <laughs> don't work on Sundays. <laughs> okay. Let's go to guys are going straight to hell for this one. Get into the whole Jesus <laughs> rest thing. Okay. Straight to hell. <laughs> Okay, so you can see here, Elon kind of changes the, the topic here. He's a little bit nervous, and you'll see people do this quite a bit. When you're attempting to kind of pivot things toward Jesus, something a little bit more serious, um, they'll throw a joke in there. They'll throw something to kind of maneuver around it to lighten, because people don't like to feel that kind of pressure. They don't like the awkwardness of encountering those big questions, those big topics of religion and where you go after you die. And especially when Jesus enters the picture, people get nervous. So you can understand here what Elon is doing. You know, he's trying to make a joke to lighten things up. We'll see if they can reel it in. Well, this is true. This is true. I, so, okay. So to make this church, we have to do, we have to make sure just, to, we're wondering if you could do us a quick solid and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> On Real the quick. show. <laughs> um, I agree with the principles that Jesus advocated. Um, there's great wisdom in what, in, in the teach, teachings of, of, Jesus, uh, and I agree with those teachings. Treating people as you would wish to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Very important. So it's like a 60, 70 percent yes? If, if Jesus is, is uh, saving people, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't stand in his way. You know, like, I'll be sure. I'll be safe. Why not? Sweet. We did it. Yeah. I think he just said yes. We got him. <laughs> All right. We got him. I'll get into Elon's response to the person of Jesus and what he believes about Jesus in a little bit, but I want to talk more about this whole what seemed like a real missed opportunity. It's always my intention to offer grace to people because I, you know, I don't want to be that guy that's just kind of <laughs> literally in my bedroom saying, these guys could have done such a better job and like, how could they do this? And obviously there's a lot of pressure and we all make mistakes. We all choke from time to time. We all cower in the face of pressure and we were not the perfect witnesses that we want to be. There needs to be an acknowledgement though. It, yeah, it was a mistake. Like that, that he, they gave them no, him no insight into, actually what the gospel is. This is a lesson. I, I don't want to just, you know, be dogging on these guys. I want us to learn from this. Try to take away some lessons and, and maybe the first one is don't assume somebody knows the gospel. Choose repetition even if that leads to rejection. If they were to share the gospel with him, like in a really clear way, and he had already heard it before, and he's like, guys, I, I know all that. Stop preaching at me, whatever. That's like the worst thing that could happen. But it's not wrong to be repetitive with sharing truth with people. That's actually a loving thing and you can do it in a non-preachy way and, and we'll talk about that in a second but I want to loop back to what Elon's response to this was because was it a sufficient praiseworthy response was it like yay he's in the family now no 
he talked about, yeah, Jesus has some good principles. Yeah, he, he's a good teacher. Yeah, he, he's got some good morals. He's really um, kind of a guru when it comes to loving other people and turning the other cheek. That's not enough. We need the whole gospel here. Simply believing that Jesus is a good teacher is no more than the than the Muslim or, or even the, the, the Jewish person that believes that Jesus, what, like similar to Ben Shapiro, what he says about Jesus, he's like, well, he was, he was a good teacher. He, he died for, you know, being kind of a revolutionary but he was no more than a good teacher. That will not save you. You need to believe that Jesus is Lord. You need to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. And how do we understand our sin? And it doesn't take us that long to look into the Bible, especially Romans, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If we even fail at one commandment, we are guilty of all of it. We are guilty before God because of our sin. And then from there, Jesus' life actually begins to make sense. He came to this earth fully God and fully man without sin. You see, we sinned, but but Jesus never did. He fulfilled what we could never do. And he died on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God. And Jesus rose again, defeating death so that we could be free from the power penalty and one day the presence of sin. That is amazing news that people desperately need to hear, including Elon Musk. So how can we share the gospel effectively in a context where we don't want to come across as just being preachy or shoving the gospel down people's throats as they often accuse us of? Well, I think a really important thing is asking questions, especially in a context like this, right? A podcast format, asking questions to get into his understanding of what Christianity is. What does he know about Jesus? What does he know about the gospel? And beginning to kind of untangle some of those lies and distortions and misconceptions that often reside with people that grew up Christian, but now long, no longer associate with Christianity. Because there are misconceptions. Jesus wasn't just a good teacher, and you can't just understand him as that uh, without coming to terms with what he said about being God, being I am, being one with the Father. And what are we supposed to do with that? My goal in having a conversation about Jesus is to help them understand what it's all about, to give them context to the, the, why we say the things we say, as opposed to just kind of assume that they know what's going on. Because obviously here, Elon Musk, he really didn't know. And who knows, he might come back on their podcast and they might be able to share the gospel with him this time. And, and that would be amazing. I know there's been times in my life where I I really wanted to share the gospel and then I chickened out and then I had another opportunity to do it. It's just kind of one of those things where you're like, God, I'm sorry for kind of <laughs> messing up and cowering down. And I just pray that you give me another opportunity to go at it and, and really represent you well. Even when we do fail, even when we do cower in the face of, um, you know, wanting to be accepted and liked, um, that we would come back and learn from that and that we would be faithful to God and his gospel. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and got something from it. I really hope this video came across in the way that I intended it with love and grace and compassion. Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon that makes what I do possible in helping people follow Jesus daily. So thank you so much to you guys. Uh, you can like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time. God bless.